Welcome to the Future of Tourism podcast. I'm David Peacock. Stop owning your own content. Young leaders are stepping up. Bring everyone to the table. And imagine their world anew. As destination organizations, we are good at getting the usual suspects in a room. Our hotel partners, our attractions, some level of government. But what about the unusual suspects? What about our sustainability partners, the youth voices, the citizen historians, our social justice peers? How do we cut through the clutter and really demonstrate that something different is going on at the DMO? That halt and catch fire moment always seems to start with a spark that literally ignites a long conversation. Those sparks have to be bright and powerful if they're going to get things going. They have to move and inspire a critical mass of people to consider creating a whole new path. And that's as good a place as any to introduce my next two guests. Rob Holmes, founder and chief strategist at GLP Films, and Casey Carnaveri, business development manager at GLP Films. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Where are you? What's it like? Hey, David. I'm good. Thanks for uh, having us here. Uh, I'm up in Maine. And uh, today's a, a nice day out. Fall is fall has arrived. Changing colors yet or not yet? Oh, not yet. We got a little bit of time. Amen to that. All right. Casey, how are you? Where are you? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, and David, thank you for having us on today. Um, I'm actually a little bit south of Rob in Massachusetts, uh, north of Boston. Well, it's super to see you both. Um, I have you here to talk about GLPs. But I have you here to talk about GLP in the context of, of that idea of igniting movements and sparks. You've done some exceptional work around the world over the last three years and a lot of it in the middle of COVID as well. Um, that really has been catalytic at getting destinations to see themselves differently. And that's often the difference in whether or not a new movement starts or whether something stays the way it is. So, Rob, um, fill us in a little bit of G on GLP. What does it mean and where, where are you coming from? Sure. Well, GLP was founded 14 years ago, which seems, well, hell, it is a long time ago. Uh, the original uh, name was Green Living Project. And really, the concept was producing content, short digital content that was around green or eco topics uh, that had a real positive story tied to it. So today, GLP we're a full service content marketing agency. We specialize in sustainable tourism, regenerative tourism, and you know, really uh, just excited to give people a glimpse of the work we're doing today with destinations all around the world. Casey, Casey, you joined uh, when? Um, I joined back in May, um, just after I finished up my master's. Very good. Give us your take on GLP. Yeah. Um, it, so GLP, um, you know, for me is, is, uh, a company that, um, and I had been following Rob, he doesn't actually know this. I don't think I've told him the story for a while. Um, but yeah, uh, I had been following Rob for, uh, you know, about a year or two, um, when I really, really embraced sustainability and, and was studying it. Um, so I was drawn to the company because of its authenticity, um, and like-minded individuals that were working there that truly believe in sustainability and using sustainability as a force for good. Um, and you know, I've seen a lot of their videos, um, that were there and I was like, wow, these are really wonderful and authentic and several are in destinations that, um, you know, I didn't think were, were embracing sustainability. Um, and, and, and I, I took the opportunity to, to come on board and, and join the team. So it, it, during the pandemic, it seems like sustainability really jumped in order of magnitude and importance isn't it interesting that when everything stopped uh there are a number of forces in play and 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 uh, not all of them to do entirely with the environment but sustainability took on a whole new meaning it's now it's now social economic and environmental and mental environmental sustainability all the time um you can see that this industry was moving towards an awareness of that concept for almost a decade but the truth be told pre-pandemic it was outliers and early adopters who were really starting to grapple with it. In the past 
two years, I've been to more sustainability events, been involved in more really meaningful sustainability conversations, places like Impact in Victoria, uh, just out of Goyang, literally just a week ago, they added a sustainability conference to their Goyang Destination Week for all of Korea. Um, there's the Athens Conference in a month. Um, it's become a central tenet of Destinations International's discussions and, and, and European City Marketing. But you guys started on this journey quite a while ago. And so many people we meet in this space have. Rob, tell me a little bit about the journey towards um, GLP and its, and, and its real sort of zero in. I mean, you're a great filmmaker. You can go in any, any which direction. But tell us about the genesis of this. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll, I'll go into my educational background. Actually, I've got an undergraduate degree in wildlife management. So a lot, big part of my career, actually, and I came into content, storytelling, production from a totally different perspective. And I think that actually is a really good sort of overall approach for GLP and our team and our approach is we look at things totally differently, you know. Um, but but on the environmental side, I mean, that was really one of the you know, one of the reasons why I started GLP was simply looking at tourism has a tremendous impact on destinations around the world and it, it has a tremendous impact on the environment. And I know for me during COVID, I dealt firsthand with situations that a lot of people were, you got your kids at home, they're pounding away at the computers all day, they're pounding away on you as an adult. And so every day at four <laughs> o'clock, I would take the kids out basically to walk the dog, so to speak. I'm getting the kids out of the house so they don't kill us. And but we went outdoors, you know, I explored where I am in Maine over the past uh, over that year and a half. I got to know that area better uh, in that year and a half period than the five years I was living in Maine. So it was just that re realization firsthand of the importance of the outdoors, the importance of nature, getting outside, getting off your screen. And that to me is what I think a lot of us went through, just getting fresh air, having distance you know, dispersal, getting out, you know, out away from other people due to COVID. But it was that sort of appreciation on an individual level, the importance of community, the importance of family, the importance of the environment. That's really, I think, why sustainability has now popped up on the radar screen to all these destinations when in the past they sort of took a blind eye. But now we've all gone through a two year incubation period due to COVID and realized, hey, this stuff's important. Well, and, and we also realized something else, I think, at the same time that really that really contributed to that, which is, and as our destinations will be in five or 10 years, is up to us and us being all of us. So here we are on our parks and trails. Here we are in our not shopping malls that aren't opened. Here we are looking at how we order and consume food and goods. We're saying, wow, these are our communities. We actually have heck of a lot more control here than we thought. And that's that's the part that I get excited about is, is again, the outliers around the world. In some sense, we've been following them around, looking at the Bay of Plenty, for example, and its sustainable program or the Prom Tour Panama program. But they were happening in pockets. Now everybody's saying, wow, we actually are part of our own fabric. And I think your films have done a really good job of reflecting communities back to themselves. And I, and I think to the Copenhagen example, and I, and I love the work that they did there, um, you know, the end of tourism, we know it, but I think the most important thing in there, when you hear it with Sinje Sin Ungersteg talk about it, is when they reflected those findings back to the people in their market. Casey, what's your what's your favorite GLP project? The one that just makes you say, wow, that's that's this is just a great encapsulation of what we're trying to do and 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 show and be here. Yeah, um, and actually, at first, I want to say that you brought up Copenhagen. I was actually in Copenhagen um, in in March of this year, and um, it's true. The destination itself is just a is a wonderful de destination representation of how tourism is done right, um, and that's an ethos within the community that's there. Um, you know, we didn't actually shoot a film there, but I, I just wanted to say that was a really good example. Um, if for me, David, my favorite film, truthfully, is the Sedona film that was put together. Um, and it really speaks to the authenticity that GLP, GLP brings forward um, as, as a company. Um, and if you haven't seen the video, you'll see it when you go through it. 
um, it's shot in, in real time and speaking to people about what's important to them about their destination and why it's important for preservation of that destination because it, it, it does matter to them. Um, you know, Sedona, as we all know, is it's an over-touristed, um, you know, community um, and, and um, without actually having a, a hearing a voice uh, of people that are there um, and an education of the tourists that are brought in, there's really not that much that's going to change. Um, you know, if you think about yourself, you know, you, you go to a place and um, somebody's telling you something about what's important to them, you think twice um, before you go ahead and make your next decision. And you bring that on with you and, and you pass it along to the next person that's there. So that film to me is actually uh, one of those ones that kind of impacts you um, and, and makes you think a little bit. So I, 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 that's, a, that's a great observation. And I mean, Sedona, you know, to people who haven't been there, it's, it's mystical and fantastic. People have been there. It's like yeah. that, that plus plus. I, I remember my first time getting to, to mountain bike around Cathedral. It's just like, wow and and yeah to to be fair to sedona it's it's exactly in the crosshairs of that difficult time when it's got to decide its tours and future and there's a real balance that's so hard to strike between residents and visitors and and just and we you know we we could kind of gloss over and say well it's gone swimmingly it's not it's going really hard it's been a hard decision i love the film i love the film's ability to tell the story i i hope it's shared more widely um, not because it's a pretty film or because it, it, you know, but because it does tell the story from the resident's point of view in a, in a, in a really good way. The other one I loved was 120 seconds with some named Ruff. What's her name? She's from Republic of Democratic Republic of Congo. Rosemary Ruff. Yep. What, what, an, what an incredible film. Why did you make a 120 second film with Rosemary Ruff from the Democratic Republic of Congo? who went back to look after flora and fauna after her husband passed away. Why Rob? Well, we, um, the 120 seconds was actually a whole series that we did, um, celebrating our 10th anniversary a number of years ago. Um, so that was the series that we produced, but Rosemary was awesome. She's a champion. She's a warrior. You know, she's a woman going into a man's destination. If I had to say that, um, the DR Congo, uh, was probably one of the, most, I won't say challenging, but interesting places that we've ever gone filming wise. I mean, I went to school in Kenya, so I know Africa very well. I travel all around Africa, um, but going there, film crew landing in the DR Congo with UN planes, vehicles, tents everywhere. I mean, it's like no other. Um, and, and, you know, Rosemary really just, this is a story of, I mean, it's very symbolic of the work we've done. It's, it's her journey. It's her experience going into a, a, a destination like the Congo, but falling in love with, an, a, you know, an endemic species like the Okapi that uh, was endangered, that was under threat. And they built up a really amazing, you know, conservation program there. Again, tapping into my background in wildlife conservation, wildlife management. So, uh, but Rosemary was great. And she was, she's a, I think at the end of the day, the success of our videos, our stories, the campaigns that we produce all comes down to people and their journeys and their stories. And Rosemary is a great example of that, of, um, you know, her, her journey. It's real. It's, it's an authentic story that, that people really connect with. And I think that's the important part. I think that's really, really the important part is that is that authenticity. Right. There's no there's no smoke. There's no anything there. It's it's real people, real destinations, real voices. And and that's the part that really resonates, um, you know, with the people that we work with and, and with myself um, and why I'm proud to to be a part of, um, you know, a company like GLP. So let's talk about how that message is getting out there these days, because, you know, we've got content and we've got channels, but interestingly you know it's in a McLuhanist sense the medium is the message boy oh boy there's so many different mediums this goes out through now um when you look at the successful distribution of content like this which is for all intents and purposes nowadays 120 seconds is long term long form film right <laughs> you know so in turn in terms of distribution of some of your projects what's tell me some of the uh, distribution models that you like the best, because again, it's, it's great content. It's compelling. Now it has to reach an audience. The audience isn't being pushed to nowadays as much as they're finding you. 
How do audiences find great content like this? Well, it's in my opinion, it's all about being targeted. You know, we've got a five-step model that we walk destinations through. The latter part of that, the fourth and fifth step of, the, of our model, one is on consumer. So really looking, you know, working with, you know, super targeted partners. We work with travel writers or journalists. We work with influencers, but more micro influencers. So for us, it's always been about quality, not quantity. So you look at tourism, a lot of the destinations that are struggling with over tourism. Well, they've been doing a lot of cases, a mass market approach. And now finally the light bulb has gone off that, okay, yeah, maybe we don't want the whole world coming to our destination. We want that targeted audience, you know, the high value consumer, someone who's going to stay longer and spend more money. It's a very idealistic approach, but it's working in a, in a number of destinations. So, um, you know, so we'll target consumers, a very targeted, you know, we did a great campaign in the country of Georgia in Eastern Europe yeah. where we targeted five destinations across Europe. We weren't targeting North America. You're, you're, North America is not a, a long haul destination for Georgia. It's Europe, it's Poland, it's Italy, it's France, the UK, et cetera. So um, the other half of our distribution is trade. So working with great trade partners, connecting again, targeted travel advisors with operators, uh, resellers. So again, a really important part on our end to show that one, this content's gonna engage with the media, engage with editors, for earned media placement, but it's also gonna engage with the trade. And that's really the result of producing high quality content. It'll appeal to, to so many people in an authentic, engaging way. And if you're a buyer or planner and you see this content, it's like, hey, I, I want my clients to experience that. So the distribution, I'm glad you asked, is a really important part of the work we do. And we've been really strategic on that to really tailor each campaign you know, Sedona is not a bunch of videos. It's a full on campaign, you know, that we targeted local citizens, local residents, but then also people that have already booked their trip to Sedona, not new right. customers. This, and this here, wasn't okay. Big, you know. And here, here's what I love about that, though, too, because so often we have two sets of messaging, our internal message and our external yeah. message. And in tourism yep. for so long, you know, the external message is, is the kind of films you created, then the internal message is, and here's our metrics on bed tax, and here's our metrics on this. Exactly. Guess what? For once, there's a unity to these messages. The message is to the world, this is who we are. And the world either wants to come and share, this is who we are, or they don't. They become a self-selecting sample. Talk to me a little bit more about targeting internal residents uh, casey your thoughts on it I, I think i think this might be the secret sauce in glp for me M my work over the past 10 years when you try and get a group of people in a room to do something different there's got to be something that really motivates them and we've done some great lengths at the regional office to to do exceptional inception events that that move and inspire people and get them geared i see your films in the same way tell me what you're working on to move and inspire internal publics and and and, and things like that because i think that's one of the real powers of your project yeah and I, I you know and rob certainly chime in here but you know the, the bigger part david is actually finding that that voice finding the the person uh, the one or two persons in that destination that is willing to, to speak up um, that truly cares and giving them a voice and giving that opportunity to go ahead and be that catalyst for change. Um, you know, those that are willing to stand up to the DMOs, the industry in itself and say, hey, we need to make some changes. This isn't working. This is we're not happy and and giving them an opportunity to to come forward um, and really, really kind of help them unite the rest of the people in the community. It's not an easy process. Uh, so, so, so hang on. So, so what you're really talking about there, though, is <clears throat> beyond what actually shows up on film, then you have to build networks of people who have different interests. Right. You're in market, which is a great, which is a great segue to talk about that. And it's something we hadn't mentioned. So you're in market. You've got a multiplicity of voices. We're not talking about recording dissenters, but we're talking about getting their thoughts on how the story could be better. That's a really good point. Rob, you guys are generally in market for quite a while, too. We're not talking about a storyboard, you know, a production schedule, hit and run. We're talking about research here, too, aren't we? Yeah. And, and again, that's where we come from a very different perspective and coming back. You know, there's not a lot of uh, corporate speak and 
you know, just the typical, if I, again, the production side is one smaller part of what we do across the board with these destinations. Um, but talking about that, you know, again, we had a different approach, you know, and using Sedona, Arizona as, as that example, you know, I went there a year before we launched, almost a year before we launched the films doing really a scouting trip. I wanted to get to know all the key stakeholders in town. You know, most folks don't do that. I went in, spent the time, brought our head of production. He went and shot just because seasonality, it made sense just to get some footage just in case, because you never know when the rain or clouds might creep in. But uh, for me, it was about of getting a firsthand experience of Sedona. I'd never been there before. And so we went in and this is something we did on our own. We went in and and met all the trade, met the, you know, the typical, um, you know, uh, hospitality, hotels, uh, but also the nonprofits, the local organizations that are involved, all the key stakeholder players. And that was really important for us to get the different voices and the different opinions exactly. on what is tourism here, what works, what doesn't work, you know, ask those difficult questions. And so one of the takeaways I had right away was, OK, there's clearly a divide. No disrespect to Sedona and, and all the folks there. It's a, a wonderful community and they're working extremely hard to, to really improve things uh, there, both for locals and tourists. Um, but I but I will say that collective voice, you know, talking to a broad range of different people, getting their opinion. You know, the key here is and all the work we do globally, we filmed in 46 countries around the world, is you have to make the local community, the citizens, whatever you want to call them, part of the solution. Put them a seat at the table, make sure their voice is heard, especially now coming out of COVID with everything going on just on the on the DEI side, on the environmental justice side. I mean, you, you really want all voices there. And so we did that. And I was there three different times before we actually went into filming. Uh, which, again, is a big investment on our end, but it was really important to do that research, do that due diligence, get to know the key people. And, and then also we took it upon ourselves to do community get togethers. So the second time I came back, yeah. we brought people together. It wasn't just the, uh, you know, the sustainability committee for the town, which is a known group. It was bring the trade together, bring citizens. And, and also, too, because we had heard these sort of war stories of, you know, citizens that had a really loud voice that were kind of pissed off. Um, we said, <laughs> let's bring them, you know, get them to, you know, we want to hear your thoughts because we see ourselves, uh, you know, as storytellers is I, I want to be aware of everything because at the end of the day, if we're going to tell a really good, true, honest story, we need to have that filter and be able to really look at it holistically saying what's best for Sedona and this area. Sure. At the end of the day, we're going to tell a great story, but this was a unique story and we wanted to make sure all voices were heard and everyone was part of it. Okay. So <clears throat> those sparks have to be bright and powerful and they have to get things going and they have to be a big deal in a very short time. Yeah. I think you did that. That's great. And, and I, you, can, you can tell I love I love the approach. Um, that kind of credibility has led to a whole bunch of great work. And in fact, internationally, you've been doing a lot of work. Um, you you landed some international accounts. Do you want to talk about them? Some you've been at and, and Rob, when you articulate your understanding of Sedona, it's kind of fun because the depth is is so obvious. And I can imagine why some of your international clients have said to you, literally wow, you seem to really understand who we are, which is which is probably the highest compliment any client can pay anybody who's supplying them. You know, you seem to have invested in understanding us. What's what's going on internationally you can talk about? I mean, there's a lot internationally. I will say just looking at our sort of resume and, and the work we've done, you know, we've we filmed across Asia, across Africa, Latin America, Europe, um, a lot of a lot of destinations. But I think what what really gets us excited is just looking where tourism is shifting, that more destinations are coming on board, seeing the importance of sustainability. But also, though, in my opinion, everyone sees sustainability in different ways. It's not just the environment. It's also culture. It's also heritage. It's community. It's social issues. You know, so I really look at, a, at sustainability means different things to different people. And so what we're excited about are destinations that are really seriously looking at sustainability, saying this is fundamental to us. You know, so we just um, it, we have a multi-year campaign with the country of Armenia 
And um, that's probably one of the most exciting campaigns we've ever had, really just simply because of the multi stakeholders involved. We've got multiple people, organizations, agencies that we've hired to be strategic partners for us, working with an international aid group that's funding it, working with the ministry. So again, a lot of moving parts and it's it's a challenge, but I love it because at the end of the day, there's this wonderful opportunity to take the rich history and heritage of Armenia where they've got a global diaspora, uh, people living all around the world, uh, an amazing rich destination, but it, that is also going through a, an exciting transformation of what is Armenia today? You know, just looking at wine, you know, the wine story there, you know, they're under Soviet rule when they were forced to, to grow, you know, or to, to sell Burgundy and, and non-wine. And uh, Georgia, actually, ironically, their next door neighbor got all the wine. Um, and so, but Armenia has been growing wine for over 6,000 years, 6,100 years. So you have this rich history now, but that was broken off due, due to the Soviet era. And now it's suddenly popped up after all the, you know, Soviet Union, uh, the USSR broke apart. Um, you have this new generation, these okay. young kids, you know, right. that, are, that are living the new spirit. So I get a big smile on my face, Rob, because I love talking to you about things and destinations because the authenticity of your intense desire exactly. to understand and unpack them. Let's be clear about one thing. Oh, he gets two. fired up. It's awesome. He gets totally fired up. <laughs> your, um, the Armenian Project actually did very much come through GLP, too. I mean, that all of this stuff's been added by you guys. Not, you weren't added to join this. You were. They were so impressed with your understanding of their ethos in the films that you represented they, they started talking to you guys about brand didn't they yep yeah no right. they came to us they saw us speak at an event itb a couple of years ago and then the conversations just continued so it just took time all right so casey that's that's the great that's the greatest example you can think of someone loves the credibility yeah. of your process so much that they want to talk to you about being that spark that's a really exciting uh, position to be in as you look to market glp forward in the future isn't it that's exactly right and and we'd be foolish to say david that this is going to be that dynamic shift for for destinations you know in moving forward um you know it's it's uh, you know i can't look into a crystal ball and say you know what's going to work for the future but you know with authenticity being at the center fold for so many destinations and moving forward you know embracing it now and you know working with people and in that understand that and do get fired up, um, you know, when you're talking about it and want to help you tell your story and in the right way, um, you know, not bringing in the math, mass masses to two destinations anymore. And that's what's great about the company. Um, it's like minded individuals. We all feel the same way well, hey, um, it, in, in what we do. I think you nailed it there, too. And, and no, not every destination in the world is going to use a GLP as their spark. But the great no. news is. The great news is there's plenty of them out there that can now see, wow, that could be the spark. And I will tell you, as, as a destination development specialist, you go around looking for these sparks, not just the spark, but where the spark okay. fits with that community. So I'm excited about what you guys are doing. Uh, I'm following a lot of your projects with, with, with real earnest. I hope we continue these conversations. Keep us in the loop. Um, your, your stuff on the African continents. Uh, great. Uh, I've, I've had a bit of back and forth with some peers there. We should talk about that sometime, but you guys do amazing work. Um, come back and talk to us in six months. Yes, sure. That sounds okay. good. That sounds perfect. So, all right. There'll be a update lot of great stories. We'll update on Armenia. Okay. Just uh, closing thoughts. Our, our, our audience is primarily um, senior leadership in destinations. Uh, just one closing thought to each of you, Casey first, and then I'll let you round it out. Uh, uh, what, anything you want to share with our partners? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, listened, I've listened to this podcast for a long time, David. Um, and, and, you know, closing thoughts that out there is that, that change is happening um, and it, it's time to embrace it. Um, you know, embrace sustainability. And, you know, it, it may seem like a daunting process. Um, it's not going to be a quick process. But, you know, that first step is, is you know, just putting that one foot in front of the other. Um, and don't be afraid to, to be authentic, you know, within your destination. That, that's the, the really the, the important part. Um, and embrace those hard conversations because, you know, sometimes you got to get beaten up by the community, um, you know, to move things forward. Yeah. So that, I would say that that's my, my, my closing thoughts there. Robert. 
Uh, yeah, I think um, when when looking at destinations, um, it can, it can be a daunting task to reposition to uh, you know to target a new audience market, um, and and keep it simple. You know, at the end of the day, you don't have to create fifty videos to to and a full on campaign. You know, you can do something, you know, you can just produce whatever content's possible at that time. Uh, that's the beauty of digital. That's the beauty of social these days is is um, you can seed the market, show what's coming down the line, produce some initial content and uh, and then just wait six, 12 months and then come back and, and do some more. So um, I agree with Casey's point. Sustainability, regenerative, that really is the future. That's where travelers are going. That's that new travel audience, millennials, Gen Z. They're all looking at it. Everyone, mo traveler of the future wants to make a difference. They want to go to destinations that care. They want to um, really have a unique and authentic experience. And all of that revolves around sustainability. And, and that's what's been an honor for us is to pull out those great stories, great experiences, and share them to the right audience.